Hey guys, Buff Elgato here. I'm going to show you some of the loadouts that the pros are using, why they're using them, some things they might not be telling you um, about the parts that why they're using those certain parts. So we're going to start off right now. The meta this week kind of is the uh, FFAR and the M16. We're really at a basically an equal spot right now where majority of the guns work really well. Uh, a lot of people are still using the Kilo, the M13, the Ram, the M4, Raw. Uh, some of you have never stopped using certain guns because it just works well with you. You're used to it. It's really getting to a balanced place right now. There's a few guns that are a little OP. Some are a little underwhelming. But I'm going to show you what the pros are using and the reason why. So, <clears throat> if you've been watching any of um, Dr. Disrespect, Zlander, Mercs, Jack Frags, um, there's a few other ones, Stone Mountain. A lot of them have been using a combination of the FFAR and between the M16 and the AMAX. I'm going to show you why and also... They've been using a lot of the CAR-98. CAR-98's always been there. Uh, M16's always been powerful. Uh, I know at the beginning, if, uh, say, Nick Merckx, for an example, he made a video a while back saying he hates it, it sucks. The thing is, is he never had it leveled up. And if you go and if you look up the parts that he has on his M16, uh, they are basically lower level parts on his gun. He still shreds with it. But he even states in one of his videos that his basic loadout could change because he doesn't have everything unlocked for it. But I want to show you what to get on all these guns and the reason why. So the FFAR. Now this is an assault rifle, has a pretty high TTK, but it shoots like an SMG. We're going to use it as an SMG. Most people would never think about running two ARs in the same loadout because they use the same um, type of ammunition, right? So you only get 210 bullets to share between the two of them. <clears throat> Whenever you run this loadout, I highly recommend uh, picking up as much ammo as you can, hit the ammo reserves and the police stations, things like that, and also carrying a box of ammo. So for the FFAR, what I run, Agency Suppressor, and I run the Ranger. Now I'm gonna tell you why. The reason why I run the Ranger is because you got bullet velocity. A lot of people always go down to this task force and I'm gonna be showing you the exact numbers <clears throat> coming from these Black Ops um, guns of Cold War. I'm gonna be going in and showing you the Cold War numbers here in just a minute. Uh, so a lot of times you're going to pick the very last barrel for these guns because you want that extra damage, especially in war zone, people carrying the three shields. Everybody has 250 life um, health points if you're wearing three shields. So uh, this one doesn't add that much damage, the uh, range and the bullet velocity here. You don't want range on this gun and the damage is very minimal. What you want to do is you want to get the Ranger that has this bullet velocity. And I'll show you those numbers here in just a minute. So what you want, we're going to be using this as an SMG. So you want the bullets in this gun to be coming out and hitting the target as quickly as possible. That will overcome the damage from the barrel from here. We're not going to be shooting long range. If you were shooting long range, this gun would be totally different. But I really don't recommend it because... Uh, the speed, the fire rate of this gun, it's not really great at long range. You can set it up like that if you want, but I don't really recommend it. The other thing that I uh, put on here is Raider stock, because we're going to be running around like, again like an SMG. So this is what everybody is running with. Um, if you ever watch, uh, like I said, Zlander, uh, Mercs, a few other people, Tim Tapman, a lot of them, this is their setup. So they use uh, sprint to fire time, aim, walk, and movement speed, okay? Now before this, what I was running was the rear grip. I was running the airborne elastic wrap. Aim down sight, flinch resistance. The thing is, is this gun is so quick, look down sight with some of the other uh, attachments as well. 
plus we don't have a sight on it and it's used for up close you're not going to need that so you're going to put the stock on you want to sprint the fire time because you're going to be running around with it this is going to be close quarters go around the corner somebody's there you want to be able to pull this gun up as quickly as possible and shoot it okay um salvo because uh, you get the maximum ammo capacity reload quickness max starting ammo max uh, uh ammo capacity so here's the thing a lot of this stuff doesn't work in war zone the magazine ammo capacity and reload quickness does okay so the magazine ammo capacity it's going to be holding 50. this gun's usually a 25 rounder when you pick it up off the ground it only has 25 bullets that's not enough in war zone unless you're really hitting your shots in the upper torso neck head region and um then you gotta worry about you know are you playing duos quads trios whatever you gotta worry about uh, his teammates right so the only two that has the 50 is this one but it does not have the reload quickness this one has a really fast reload quickness i think it's 33 percent again we'll look at it in the cold war but the max starting ammo there does not uh do anything to this gun that that is the max starting ammo that is an extra mag that only counts in cold war whenever you're playing war zone uh you get 210 bullets no matter what that's your max 210 bullets so when here the magazine ammo capacity that counts in war zone that's 50 bullets reload quickness is not as high as the 33 as the mag clamp um max starting ammo that doesn't count and the ammo capacity that doesn't count you still get 210 bullets all right so it's only the top two that you have to look at so this is the one we're going to be running and then this is a little different infiltrator grip everybody knows that majority of the guns you're going to get the field agent grip because you want that vertical recoil control horizontal recoil control okay but that is usually for long range when someone is 10 15 feet in front of you the vertical recoil control and the horizontal recoil control um do very little they do very little that's for distance if you're shooting a gun for distance this is the grip to use since we're using this as an smg we're going to be using movement speed shoot movement speed aim walking movement speed this is the one that you want on this gun so this is the loadout that you need on your ffar if you're running it like an smg if you have a long range weapon as your secondary this is what you're going to be running. And this is what the gun is great for. And this is what the pros are running at ass. Okay. Now, for your backup, I'll show you uh, both M16 and the AMAX. AMAX is self-explanatory. If I go in here and go over to the AMAX, I'll show you exactly um, what to get. So <clears throat> when you go to AMAX, what you're basically going to get is you're going to get the uh, 45 round mag you're going to get the um, a monolithic suppressor the axle three times i'm sorry the vlk three times scope and you're going to get the uh, barrel with the most damage and you're going to get the commando foregrip that's uh, the standard on a lot of these ars that's basically what you're going to get and you're going to use it for um for distance all right now for the m16 m16 shreds uh again this is a little different i want to show you something a little different than let's say like uh what nick Merckx is using in tim the tap man so agency suppressor always all right now the uh, task force barrel i put on here because if you go back and look at some of these pros uh, a lot of them posted about the M16 back in like November, December. They're running the titanium. Here's the thing. There was a bug that made the titanium do more damage. The titanium barrels were the weapons that were coming over from Cold War. That's not the case anymore. That's been fixed. Now, the fire rate is nice. It shoots three-round burst. So you get three bullets that come out all at once. So... It's kind of good if you're on someone's head, if you pull the trigger, they're basically getting hit three shots immediately to where if you picked something that didn't have a fire rate, 
Um, the first bullet might hit them in the head, and because of the recoil, the next two might miss, things like that. If you aim for the chest, you, you'll get all three in the body, chest, neck, head, maybe, things like that. Um, I know Nick was running titanium. Of course, that was back in December. He hadn't had everything unlocked. It's the very th last thing you unlock uh, when it comes to the barrels, and he had not had that at the time. So if you look up his... Um, Loadout is going to show titanium barrel. I do not recommend titanium barrel. I do not recommend it in war zone. It takes uh, too many shots now. Now that they fixed it, um, it just takes uh, too many shots to down someone. And you can run it if you want. You can test it. I've noticed that when someone is at full health, it takes more than you expect. When you come down here to the task force, the gun still has a quick three round burst. Um, but with this, you're going to get that damage that you're really going to need in war zone. And you, plus you get the bullet velocity. So the bullets are going to get there quicker. So here you just have the fire rate here. You have the range the damage and the bullet velocity. Okay. Now it's very little, um, negative on the cons with the vertical and horizontal because the M16 is pretty accurate. Plus, it's not full auto, so that recoil is not really going to bother you because it's not just spraying everywhere. It's the short three-round burst that's very controllable, plus we're going to have a grip on this gun. A lot of people don't know this, but the Axle Arms 3X and also the Warzone BLK 3.0, they add a 9% recoil to your horizontal and vertical. None of the other sites do that. So you have a lot more control over vertical and horizontal recoil. They they have a 9% um, recoil control on both, or even though it's not listed. It has nothing listed on here, but they do. I don't know if that's a glitch or just a hidden thing that Activision wanted in there. I don't know, but... For the three times scopes, you have a 9% vertical and horizontal uh, recoil control um, um, modifier added to it. So always go with the three times for distance. Okay. That's going to help you with your uh, recoil. Then down here, you're going to go with the um, 60 round, it's the NAG instead of the Salvo. I've been, I've been running this one. Um, this one's just been working good for me. You can go for this if you'd like to, but, um, this one has slower aim down sight than this one. We'll take a look at the cold war stats, but, um, either one of these will work just fine. It's just, this is the one I'm really going with. The only pro to this though, is you get the 60 rounds. The other two, max starting ammo and ammo capacity, do not help you as far as um, uh, war zone goes. This one, so you get the magazine ammo capacity and the reload quickness. So if you want to run this one, you're more than welcome to. There's uh, not too much difference between these two. This is the one that Nick and Tim run, but you can run the salvo and be just fine. All right. Now, again, over here, you're going to be using the field agent because we're going for distance. So you got the vertical and the horizontal recoil control. Um, so you're not going to be using the infiltrator like we use on the FFAR. You're going to be using the field agent for grip. The last gun we're going to be looking at um, in Warzone before we flip over to some Cold War stats is the CAR-98. Now, for the CAR-98... Um, this is what I run, the monolithic suppressor, the Singar custom 27.6 inch tack laser sniper scope and FTAC sport comb. I highly recommend you use these no matter what you're on, PC, uh, Xbox, PlayStation, controller, mouse, keyboard, whatever you're using. I highly recommend these. This is a big one right here, the FTAC sport comb, because you got that aim down sight speed. That's what makes the, the uh, SPR and the CAR-98 so dominant 
is the aim down sight speeds for these weapons. Now, if you're on controller, uh, there's a perk that you can substitute this sport comb out with. I highly recommend you test it. So if you're on controller, use these four here, right? And for the sport comb, use it for a few games, get used to it, the aim down sight thing, and then replace it with presence of mind and, and see how you like that. Now you're not gonna be able to look down sight as quickly, it's still pretty fast, but you won't be able to look down as quickly but you get an extended hold of breath. Now, I know that this doesn't sound like a big thing. It really doesn't like, who cares? I'm usually, you know, you're thinking you pull the scope up, you shoot, you reload, you pull the scope up, you shoot. You're hardly ever holding the breath. You're never just sitting there staring at something, holding your breath, because you're, you're a target, right, for somebody else if you're just standing still. But I would highly recommend you just test this just to see. This is really good. Um, in some cases, it's, it's almost OP, the presence of mind. Um, it's very situational. There's not going to be a lot of times where you're just going to be sitting there staring at somebody holding your breath. But I'm telling you, this is a very good thing to try. Um, if you want to replace the sport comb, I would, I would play with the two. Now... Um, we're just going to be looking at the uh, Cold War um, stats that we're going to be bringing over real quick. Okay, guys. So I'm going to be showing you the exact stats, what you're bringing over. Because when you bring these over to War Zone, it doesn't show you the numbers. It just shows you um, negative aim down sight, positive damage. And it'll say that for several different items. If you don't have Cold War, you don't really know the numbers. So we're going to show you real quick um, the M16 and the FFAR, what we're bringing over. So how these will affect you and why we pick these certain items. So if we go into the M16, here's the M16 that I'm carrying in Warzone. If you go over to Gunsmith. So we have the Optic, right? The three times. Remember this adds a plus nine um to nine percent to vertical and horizontal recoil control okay so this is really going to help you um battle the vertical and horizontal recoil so make sure you get the three times and war zone um or the war zone modern warfare weapons get the vlk 3.0 it really helps with your control all right hope that makes sense the muzzle. So we got the ag agency silencer. So this is another 15% vertical recoil control. Okay. 15% vertical recoil control, 100% muzzle flash concealment. So you're silenced, right? It's just like the monolithic. But here we get a con with 30% bullet velocity. So the bullet's going to be coming out a little bit slower, right? So we go down to barrel. All right. The task force. Remember I was saying Nick was using the titanium. So titanium, you get a 13% fire rate. That's it, 13%. But you get a negative 25% effective damage range. That's a quarter of your damage range, right? So here's the thing. When he made that loadout, he didn't have the task force unlocked. Go down the task force. You get 14% damage, 50% effective damage range, and 50% bullet velocity so your bullets gonna be coming out faster and they're gonna be hitting harder now again you had the negative 20% vertical recoil control negative 15% horizontal now remember your three times scope is going to help with a little bit of that so far okay we have that now we go down to under barrel now for this we're gonna be shooting long range so we want the field agent so we got a plus 10% vertical recoil control and a plus 40% horizontal recoil control. That's huge. So this is what we want for the M16. And then when it comes to magazine, here's what I was running. Remember how I was saying you can use the Stenag or the Salvo. They both hold 54 rounds. Okay, now we can look at the numbers. 
So the pros, 80% maximum ammo capacity. Okay, that's where we get the 54 bullets. Now these next two, this is only Cold War um, bonuses. They, they're listed in War Zone, but they don't help you in War Zone. Max starting ammo, that just means you get an extra clip or an extra mag, sorry. And then the ammo capacity, you can carry more on you in Cold War. Remember, in War Zone, doesn't matter. You always can have 210 bullets, okay? So we're just looking at that top one. 80% magazine ammo capacity. So basically 54 rounds. But here's the cons. Negative 10 reload quickness, negative 15 aim down sight time. Okay? Now, the very last one. So the plus 80% magazine ammo capacity. All right, so 54 bullets. 35% reload quickness, that's great. 35%, that's massive on the reload quickness. But the max starting ammo, ammo capacity, we're, we're not gonna need those. Now here's the thing with the reload quickness. Remember, this is the distance gun. This is the distance gun. That's not gonna play too much of a factor in because remember our backup is the FFAR. We don't have to reload this gun as a threat from a distance. We don't need that reload quickness because we're gonna be far enough away from people with this gun if we're shooting it to not really need that, right? It's very, very situational, very low risk for reload quickness. If somebody does run up on us, we can switch to the FFAR, okay? But look at the con, negative 25% aim down sight. A quarter of the speed, we don't want that, okay? So I'm telling you, this is why I'm running this one. You, yes, you get the negative 10 reload uh, quickness, um, negative 15% aim down sight, but this is the one you wanna run. This is the only other one that has 54 rounds in it, okay? Now, we're gonna go down here and look at the FFAR. The FFAR, muzzle agency suppressor, again. So we got 7% vertical recoil control, all right? So that's already helping us with the, uh, with the recoil going vertical, right? Plus we're 100% um, concealed. The barrel, 100% bullet velocity. So the bullets are going twice as fast as normal, right? They're coming out twice as fast, hitting your target twice as fast as normal okay where if we went down to the task force we only get four percent damage remember on war zone it just says damage you get more damage doesn't say how much you're only getting four percent you're getting 50 percent effective damage range all right and you're getting plus 50 percent bullet velocity um but look at the vertical recoil control negative 20 percent and negative 15% on the horizontal recoil control. Okay, now that's not too bad if we're shooting up close. You don't really, it doesn't really matter and the max starting ammo doesn't matter in this case. See how it just says negative one mag? You're still getting the 44 bullets, right? But this is the one you wanna go. This is the one you wanna go with. 100% bullet velocity. You want those bullets hitting your target as quickly as possible, okay? That's why we picked the Ranger. The underbarrel, infiltrator grip. So remember, if for distance, we usually use field agent grips. I'll show you why we're using infiltrator. So you get the plus 5% movement speed, plus five shoot movement, plus five aim walking movement speed. Now that counters the barrel over here with the negative 20 aim walking movement speed. Okay, we get negative 20%, right, a fifth. So this is gonna help it a little bit, right? So this this adds 5% to the aim, walk, and movement speed, shoot movement speed, movement speed. Remember, we're running with this gun. We're turning this gun into an SMG because it burns through those bullets so quickly that we're turning this into an SMG. Reason why we're using this instead of the field agent. You get the negative six, I mean, uh, the positive six vertical recoil and the plus 20 horizontal recoil, that's great. That's awesome, but remember, we don't need the recoil control because we're gonna be shooting up close. We're not shooting at a distance. You're shooting at somebody that's anywhere from two feet in front of you up to 15 or 20 feet in front of you. This is very close. This is very, and that's not even enough to really change the gun if you're shooting at somebody maybe 30, 40 meters away. It's, it's still pretty damn accurate. But remember, this is the gun that we're using up close. 
Now we do have a negative 26% shoot move speed. Okay. So while you're shooting, you're not going to, you know, your guys going to be kind of walking slow, strafing slow while you're shooting. If you're using this and that's not what we're really wanting for this type of gun. This is a running gun. This is a running gun. This is what we want right here. There's no cons to this grip. Okay. <clears throat> Magazine. We're going the salvo. We're going the salvo, right? I'm not going the stagnag or stanag, whatever it is. We're not doing that because the aim down sight time, reload quickness, all this other stuff. The only thing that's helping us is the magazine ammo capacity. That's it. That's it in war zone, the plus 76. One thing is helping us. Down here, we're getting the magazine ammo capacity plus 35% reload quickness because we're running and gunning. You don't want to run into a room, blah, blah, take out somebody, blah, take out somebody else, and then you're spending the next 30 seconds trying to reload on a run and gun weapon that's giving you movement speed where you can quickly jump out of a window, jump back in through a window, go out of a door up the stairs. You want to be able to reload this gun as quickly as possible. You don't want the running and jumping to interfere with your reloads. You want to be able to reload this weapon, okay? Now we got a negative 25% sight, uh, aim down sight time, but remember we don't have a sight on this gun. Anytime you put a scope on a gun, it slows your time down, your aim down sight time. We do not have a scope on this gun. Now, I remember when I was saying I was running the handle, if you're running a little bit of distance, I love this because it's aim down sight time, flinch resistance, aim while going prone, but the shoot movement speed and sprint to fire time, that goes down, right? If you're going for distance, you want to add a little scope to this, I would, I would suggest adding this elastic wrap, but we're not doing that. We're running and gunning. So go to stock. 30% sprint to fire time. That's big. That's big. 40% aim, walk, and movement speed. The con, negative 30% hip fire. We're not hip firing this gun. We're not hip firing this gun. We're aiming down sight. There's no scope on it, so we're going to be able to aim down very, very quickly, right? Even with the, the cons from the other parts. But the, but the plus 40 and the plus 30, that counters some of this other stuff. See, those two don't have it. The negative 20 aim walking move so we got negative 20 aim walking movement speed but down here we got a plus 40 so you were already up 20 we're already up 20 on that so plus 20 and then here that doesn't affect it at all so that's why we run this is because it adds that 30 percent sprint to fire time 40 percent aim walking um movement speed this is a running gun smg that hits like an ar that is your loadout that's what you want to run. Those are the numbers. That is why. That is what you're bringing over from Cold War. Okay, guys. I hope this helped. Guys, please use these guns. Try them out. This is what the pros are using. You can watch anybody. They're always testing different things, but majority of the time, this is what they're using as of right now. When the new season hits, it's going to be a little different. We're going to be trying these new, new guns. Um, real quick, one gun I would recommend you guys trying is this, the Bullfrog, basically a PP-19 on steroids. Um, this gun can get, it's, it's accurate, it's up close, it shreds, and you can get 85 rounds in it. 85, okay? Um, you can add a little bit of damage to it because it's a little tickler. It's a tickler. But you add some damage to it, this gun will shred. Just throwing that out there. Don't overlook the this gun. Don't don't overlook it. Okay, guys, that is it for me. I hope this helped. I hope this told you why these pros are using these guns as of right now. If you like this video, please hit like. Please share it for your friends so they can see why as well. If you want to see more? Please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.